And for customers, it's just about remembering we are people. We are humans. We are people on the other side. We don't always get it right, but be patient with us. Explain to us what's happened and we will do everything we can because ultimately in hospitality, our joy comes from serving you as customers and our joy comes from doing the best that we can be and delivering you know, the highest quality of service and food that we possibly can. This week on Dirty Linen, we are diving into the world of hospitality and how customers' behaviour can impact on staff and owners of restaurants and cafes and indeed breweries as we chatted with Karen Golding yesterday. Uh, Today I am chatting to Jessica Bilston-Gawley. Jess is the daughter of Lisa Bilston who kicked off this conversation when she closed Bob's Your Uncle Cafe in Doncaster East. So you can catch up on that chat in earlier episodes of the podcast. But Jess, it was actually you that was appeared in Bob's Your Uncle's Instagram in tears just outlining the situation and the impact that the, um, the incident had on the staff. So how are you going and talk us through it? It was. Um, I'm, I'm going okay. I mean, I um, look probably a little bit more sensitive that day with some other things that have been going on um, in, the, in the personal life. But I think we, we hit breaking point when a, another waitress came out. We were actually sitting having breakfast and another waitress came out, um, you know, quite emotional and, um, and somewhat distraught saying, you know, table five, um, I, I can't handle this complaint. Can you help? Um, and so we, we went in and obviously helped um, and, you know, very friendly what seems to be the problem. And I'm, I run a HR company, so I'm well versed in dispute resolution and management. Um, and unfortunately, it, the conversation just took a very, very nasty turn. And um, it did, it did bring, you know, mum and myself and the other waitress to tears. And um, I think it became quite confrontational when he wouldn't leave when we asked him, you know, really politely to leave. Um, and that's when it, it did get quite, um, you know, he became quite verbally abusive and um, name calling and the profanity as well he was using. So it was very disappointing to see that customer behaviour. Wow. So Jess, you've obviously, you've got your HR business, Positive HR, and but, but, you, you, but you work sometimes in your mum's cafe. Can you just sort of explain how that all works, how you balance those different roles in your life? I don't work as much in the cafe anymore. I pop in obviously when we're short staffed, which unfortunately we have been a little bit lately. Um, yeah, and everyone I, I is, run, <laughs> aren't we? Um, and I run HR for the company, so I'm always, you know, checking in on the employees and talking about wellness initiatives with them as well. Oh, interesting. Okay, so. I mean, as you say, like you're an expert in dealing with people and you've you've got all that sort of those professional resources that you can draw on, those strategies that you would you would have in your business to deal with with you know tricky interpersonal situations. I mean, what are some of the things that you can bring to the hospitality arena from an HR point of view? I mean, we we really when we work with hospitality businesses, we really focus on employee wellness, um, you know, and w- what that means. Because you know, when we look at our staff, we want to try within hospitality to make sure we've got a really safe working environment, um, and that's around the manslaughter laws that have come in play. We we actually have an obligation as business owners to ensure we're keeping our employees' safety a top priority, um, and so we look into kind of you know what does employee wellness mean and for the business as well if we have a really healthy and happy workforce we've got fewer sick days we've got lower employee turnover um you know we can attract more employees which in hospitality as we know there has been that culture of people kind of move jobs um and job jump and so we're trying to decrease that but it's so important to just, you know, review and check in with your employees. How are they going? Um, how do they feel? Are they actually trained? And, you know, one person messaged me after that and said, oh, clearly that employee that's crying isn't trained in complaint management and, you know, customer complaint handling. 
I'm trained, but we all have our bad days as well where, you know, it does get too much. But training is very important, especially for those that are younger coming through hospitality. We're seeing that culture change in customer behavior. So it's important to recognize, you know, the the warning signs as well on your employees. Have they, how are they going outside of work? You know, are they feeling tired? Are they feeling fatigued? Have they perhaps had something go outside of work that's going to make them more sensitive when they are in the workplace? Are they finding it really difficult to handle those customer complaints? And if so, we need to give them further training. Um, You know, we kind of take this focus in hospitality about talking about our feelings. um, And it's something that I don't think we do enough of. We, we're we all busy. You know, hospitality is so kind of go, go, go um, and really fast paced that we don't take that time to sit down and go, okay, hold on. How was today? How did it go and how are we feeling? Um, you know, if an incident occurs, a lot of clients we work with when we go into them and we say to them, okay, customer complaint happens, how do you handle it? They say, oh, well, you know, we most likely just kick the customer out or we give them a refund and that's that's it. They don't do the follow-up to actually check in on that employee hey, that customer obviously had a complaint, you handled it really well, but how are you feeling? Um, Mm. And, you know, coming back to the, from the HR component around the workplace manslaughter laws, we have to, you know, and looking at Brody's law as well, we really have to focus now on doing that check-in and asking people how they're feeling. Okay, so let's just spell out a little bit about about Brody's law. So this was... um, there was an awful situation in in Melbourne. There was a girl called Brody Panlock who was 19 years old when she uh, suicided and that was following some bullying that she'd experienced at a cafe that she worked at in Hawthorne. Um, now, you're probably more across the, the law than, than I am, Jess, but my understanding of it is that there was an amendment to the Crimes Act that made the bullying an offence punishable by prison, by I think it was 10 years imprisonment. Um, is that what you're talking about? I mean, that's not manslaughter. So that's. No. So there's new legislation that was passed 1st of July this year, um, and it's called the Workplace Manslaughter Laws. So um, it's been passed in Victoria and Queensland for any other states listening. It's not been passed in any other state. Essentially, what it means is, um, and it doesn't just affect business owners, the new legislation is aimed at all people who are obligated to maintain a safe working environment for employees. So that's your floor managers as well or your second in charge supervisors. Um, The purpose of this new legislation is it's essentially to prevent workplace death in the future. But what it is, is it applies when, to put it really simply, when the accused, so let's say an owner, owed the victim, which could have been the employee, the the waitress, for example, a duty of care. So if, if, and I'll use an example, this example, if, for example, I obviously, um, you know, my owner owed me a duty of care when I'm working in hospitality, I've been verbally, um, you know, abused or attacked by a customer, that has then led me to go home and commit suicide, it could be found that that owner, if they did not take all reasonable steps to support me um, through that situation, then the that owner who was responsible responsible could actually end up facing 20 years in jail as well as a significant fine. Um, and the fines are up to, I think it's about 3 million thereabouts. Um, so, but, you know, 20 years of imprisonment as well for individuals. So, you know, th- uh, that's why it's so important. And so many people said, why did you close? That seems excessive. But if we don't close and if we don't check in on, on you know, employees' mental health and they do go home and it has impacted them so significantly and so gr- greatly that they do commit suicide, we can be held liable if we've not taken all steps possible to stop that from happening. Um, so that's why it's really important to kind of take that stance on mental health. Okay. Well, I suppose, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's a incredible, incredibly powerful outcome uh, from a situation 
that of course you hope never occurs. I suppose the law is there to keep employers aware of their, I guess, you know, in, in the first place, their human obligations, aren't they, that duty of care, and the law is there to to back it up with the legislative um, and and compliance and uh yeah the onus uh, that's mm. yeah it's it's all yeah it's I guess for, firstly you're dealing with these people as humans and then I suppose you've you've got your um your legal obligations as well and I'm not saying to close you know there's been a few obviously comments of people saying well we'll be closed every day if we if we do this and I'm not saying to close every time there's a situation but it is just that important reminder to, you know, review and reevaluate the processes around psychological safety in the business, you know, in, in cafes and in restaurants and pubs, um, you know, because it is that reminder that mental health is still part of your obligation to protect that of your employees. Um, you know, we had one message from a girl and Lisa might have shared it in her podcast of an employee that messaged me saying, she was walking to work one day and she actually wanted to be hit by a car because she didn't want to face the customer abuse. And in that scenario, we have to really look at the business and go, well, you know, how are you protecting this young 17-year-old um, that doesn't want to show up to work? You know, what mm -hmm. are your processes in there to, to support um, and train on handling customer abuse? Um, yeah. Yeah, so you talked about creating that space for having those conversations, those check-ins, just seeing how people mm -hmm. are going. What about the training in dealing with customer complaints or abuse? What kind of practical training will you give people to manage those situations? Look, it, it's really about, I mean, there's so many different kind of training workshops that you can use. We, we run some actually for Positive HR in our hospital clients and what that is as an example is, getting everyone together on a Sunday afternoon. We actually love to take it outside of the environment. So we love to kind of get into mother nature and have that surround us for a different feel in a different environment. And we talk through some examples. So we bring up, you know, okay, well, what? how, how would you respond? And it's almost like a bit of um, acting it out you know, pretend play. Okay, you know, here is our customer, Sarah, who's a waitress. Can you be a customer today that's really angry because his coffee's not hot enough? He's obviously had a bad day. He's screaming already at you and let's act this out. So we actually do that role play um, to make sure everyone is aware on how it should be handled and also to identify those that perhaps aren't able to communicate effectively on how how they should handle that scenario um, and then provide them some further one-on-one -on -one training as well. But there are even, there are bigger courses out there too, you know, full day workshops. Personally, I like to take the approach of just doing that smaller feedback when a situation does happen, quickly pull the waitress or whoever it might be aside and have a bit of a quick powwow yep, okay, you did that really well. Next time to, you know, calm the, the customer down, you could have maybe said this, you could have done this and just using that time to be a leader in the business. And that's up to, you know, as owners, if we're not working in the business hands-on, we then need to make sure that we're training our 2IC or our floor manager and they're the ones that have to then be, you know, supporting the employees and having those quick chats around how they could have handled the situation better. Um, even if, you know, they haven't ended up crying, it doesn't mean that it hasn't, you know, shaken them. Um, mm. So it is about just checking in, having the conversation and reinforcing what they could have said or done differently to have resolved the situation more sooner. Okay. Well, let's say that I'm just like so mad because I really am not, I'm not satisfied with the temperature of my coffee. I just, I can't imagine being this person, but okay, let's do it. So this is my one break from my day, Jess. I can't believe that you've ruined my day with this coffee that you want me to spend $4.50 on. This is really <laughs> ruining my day. Can you make my life better right now? 
Look, it, and you're going to hate me saying this, but it also comes down to the different policies in the business. So, <laughs> you know, some some cafes might have a policy where they say, you know, they might turn around and go, oh, gosh, not a problem. You know, thanks so much for, for notifying us that your coffee is, is too hot. I'm going to take that away now and just get you a fresh one and, you know, be really polite, um, really calm. And just bring over a fresh one. Others, and I do know some cafes where they they, you know, they might go into more of a conversation. Look, we serve our coffees at 60, you know, whatever it is, let's say 70 degrees. We serve our coffees at 70 degrees, which is on the hotter side, but that's because of our clientele. Um, so, you know, I can bring you over some cold milk. It really does depend on the environment and the culture and policies of the business. But making sure that all your, your employees is know what that is um if there's something regular like if that happens all the time let's say that every new person that's not a regular comes into the cafe and the coffee's too hot and that is because you always serve it at 70 degrees because your regular clientele prefer it hotter it might be the best policy to just say not a problem, sorry, we serve it at 70 degrees, but we will now remember for next time when you come back that you do prefer it at 62 degrees, you know, that little bit warmer. Take it back, yeah, get a yeah. fresh one, bring it back. Okay. Yeah, I have seen in um, in cafes, you know, that, well, they, they sometimes will have a sign up uh, about the temperature of the coffee and you feel like, <laughs> oh, okay, these guys have had this conversation a few times. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, sometimes the, I've seen one where I think it was, it was like, if you want us to burn your coffee, fine, we'll serve it hot or something like that. And it's like, oh, I don't know if I want to be, um, yeah, that coffee heathen that likes their coffee the wrong way. But <laughs> okay, oh, well, look, we've uh, seen some crazy coffee orders, you know, half decaf, half skin milk. <laughs> yeah, sure. Interesting. <sighs> Um, okay, so I'd love you to talk about other ways that you can really create that culture of empowerment and connection among staff. I've seen something, I think it was on one of your blogs about creating those champions in the business. Can you talk about mm. that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I, we call them, um, yeah, we, exactly like you said, we call them champions. And that's really about identifying the, someone in your cafe or in your restaurant that has that, you know, we call it love of hospitality. They're in hospitality, not as a stepping stone, um, you know, not whilst they're kind of studying to become a, uh, I don't know, a finance manager, but they they are your champions that are in hospo. They love it. They've got the energy and they've got that passion and they're going to be the ones to drive this conversation. You know, they're going to drive the conversation on mental health and wellness. Um it takes one person to make change in your culture. And, you know, once you've got that champion, they will then have followers coming after them. So, you know, using them to have those conversations, they don't have to be the manager, absolutely not. It's it's about finding the person that is going to go and check in on your other staff. You know, it could just be another waitress, but she or he or they are the person that go over and say, how are you doing today? Or, oh, look, I've noticed you're a bit flat today. What's going on? Do you want to have a quick five-minute chat? Um, you know, that's going to change the culture and really reinforce promoting that healthy workplace and that positive workplace because like I've said before we all have you know shit days and it is hard in hospo to come to work without bringing your personal stuff into work because you're there you're in front of everyone you're showing your face every single day to customers you've got to try and hide what's what else is going on but sometimes it is hard to do that so having your champion is just going to drive that initiative um, of getting commitment from your employees, getting the energy from them, getting that passion out of them. And, you know, what kind of spins from that is all of your training, all of your managing stress and your self-care initiatives, checking in with them, productivity, you know, obviously customers, they tend to face and show up in front of customers a lot happier and a lot more positive as well. Um, so I definitely think you've got to find who is that one person that's your, your leader um, that doesn't have to be a manager but is your hospo gun that has the energy and passion to drive the conversation to everybody else in the business. 
Okay. I mean, that's that's really interesting. And I suppose some people would love to take on that role. But I mean, is that pressure that you're putting on somebody to to bring that energy to be to put that to put that on them? Absolutely not. It's not about going up to someone and saying, Steve, you are now my champion and I need you to go and do this. That's, okay. that's not the approach to take. Um, you know, it's more about just yourselves identifying that person and then you're encouraging that good positive behavior that they are providing so you might go up and go oh Steve you know great job I just saw you check in on Sarah thanks so much for doing that you're reinforcing and encouraging more of that good behavior so without telling that person you know you are my champion you're 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 kind of again getting them to do more of that good behavior um, and that you know that supportive behavior that they're already doing um Mm. it's just about encouraging it to happen more so you know like I said great job thanks for checking in on her or thanks for doing that um and then they go oh oh okay I feel good about myself they just yeah they said great job I'm going to do more of that so Mm. then before you know it that's your champion Right. Interesting. Sometimes, you know, as a restaurant critic, I walk into a business, you know, walk into, walk into a cafe or a restaurant and it just feels, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like it's mm. humming. It feels like, you know, you don't know if there's friction or if uh, the dishwasher just broke, like you don't mm. know exactly what it is, but you can, it doesn't feel right. And uh, I mean, you must, as an HR consultant, go into businesses and, and have that feeling as well. Like, what wh- what are the things yeah. that you look for, or you know, what are the clues that um, mm. that lead you down the path to solving a situation like that? Um, a really good example. I actually went into a restaurant um, in Carlton not too long ago and walked in, and it was that oh, I use the word cold. You know, that cold feeling. Something was off, and like you said, we don't know what it is, but we sit and observe. And you know, quickly, obviously, I'm looking in the kitchen, going, "Is something going wrong in the kitchen?" Nope. Everyone seems to just be working there. Okay, let's look through the bar. What's going on? And then before you know it, we've got two people that seem to be having a bit of a, you know, two employees that seem to be having a little bit of a a disgruntled conversation together. But this is out in the floor in front of customers we can see. Um, You know, so I actually jumped up and went over and said, oh, what's going on? I can see you guys aren't happy working here. Oh, no, 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 it's it's not that. Oh, 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 don't worry, do you need help? You know, go sit back down. We'll come over to you. It's table service. Um, They obviously didn't realise I was there observing because I was about to be their HR manager. Um, (laughs) But (laughs) we've got to do my research. But once we got in there, we realised that there were a lot of personal personality conflicts occurring and there was nobody in charge so there was no floor manager so what we had we had confrontation between people that didn't agree on on one particular element or process you could say of what was happening in the business and you know with that that turned though because that's that's a toxic um, element right and that then turned into every single employee and just spread through the whole business so so then after having one-on-one conversations with everyone, it turns out, no, this is a really toxic workplace. You know, nobody gets along. We all scream at each other. We don't agree with each other. And that comes down to not having the policies, not, you know, being clear on what they're there to achieve. You know, we're all here to achieve the same thing. And that is to deliver beautiful service and, you know, quality food to our gorgeous customers. And, you know, to have a great shift and have a great time and enjoy the industry we're in. Um, So I do see it a lot and it's just about looking around to see how the staff interacting with each other, who is there to be that leader or manager. And if there is no leader or manager, then why not? Um, It doesn't have to be, you know, a manager, it can be the owner, but we need to have that person that's there to, you know, make sure everything is humming um, correctly. Mm. So we've gone through a really tricky year. It's not over yet, but, you know, things are looking a little bit brighter over summer. Uh, What kinds of things do you think people should be looking out for as restaurants are reopening after 
a second lockdown in Victoria and, you know, and around the country just um, still dealing with the effects of the pandemic. What kinds of mm. things have you seen in staff and have you noticed uh, differences in customer behaviour? Definitely, um, I guess with staff, you know, they have gone through a lot of restaurants and, and hospitality have, they actually closed. Some didn't even do takeaway. Mm. So we've had a period of um, employees feeling very uncertain and very, I guess, scared through through this period of change. Am I going to have a job to go back to? What's going to happen? So if they are coming back into the workplace after that uncertainty, it is about supporting them further because, you know, I know people say oh, it's like riding a bike, they'll jump straight back in. For some people, though, it's not the case. For some people, they are very anxious on getting back in and talking to customers again. Um, you know, it has been nine months or so that they may have not even even worked at all in that nine months. Um, so it's about, you know, again, the check-ins, supporting them. How do you feel coming back in? Is there anything that we need to refresh you on from, our, you know, how we do things? I know that it seems dumb and I've had people say, oh, but Jess, that seems so stupid. Why would we say that? Because some people, they can't just jump straight back in. So we've got to ask the questions. If we don't ask the questions, they're not going to give us the information. They're not going to come forward and say, hey, I'm feeling anxious or mm. I'm not sure what to do. So we have to ask the questions. Um, in terms of customers, and funny enough, I was actually talking to a, a plumber that was here at home today and he said it's the same for his industry. Um, you know, I think across board we are seeing a change in consumer or customer behaviour. Um, people are angry and I, I say, you know, I use the word angry. They they seem angry. They Is this because we've been in lockdown and we don't know how to behave towards other people? We've actually forgotten how to behave to other people? Um, or is this just this build-up of uncertainty and the build-up of all the change we've gone through that we're so eager to, you know, get back out into cafes and go to a restaurant and we want everything to be perfect because we've been waiting so long for this that that intent, which is a good intent to enjoy it and to want it to be perfect, turns into anger when it isn't perfect. Um, you know, you talk about coffee. I've waited nine months to sit in the cafe and have my coffee again and then I sit down and it's 70 degrees and not 62. Like, oh, my gosh, and that turns into anger. Um, and don't get me wrong, it's not everybody. I mean, some people sit down and go, oh, you know, oh, it's a little bit hot. Can I just have a little bit of the cold milk? No worries. But for, for those that perhaps have faced more mental challenges um, in their personal lives, I mean, we don't know what's going on with them behind the scenes. Perhaps they've gone through, um, like myself, I've gone through a separation through isolation, um, you know, and that's impacted me for sure. Other people have gone through all of their own, um, you know, issues in their personal life that when they sit for that perfect 60 degree, two degrees coffee, they're, they're they're being angry and that's turning into a raised voice or that's turning into using profanity or, um, you know, taking that almost verbal aggression out towards a staff member. But I do think it's happening um, and so that's why it's so important to make sure we're training our staff more now than ever before so that they can handle this because we don't know when that's going to change. I do think it, it will settle down. I think, you know, people will start, especially with this conversation and raising education and awareness, be kind, we're humans, we're not always going to get it right. You know, we are going to make mistakes and we will do everything we can to fix it, but just check your tone and check your approach in how you bring that concern or that complaint forward to staff. Mm. I mean, it just... You just don't know what someone is carrying with them in any interaction and, of course, that goes from, for, you know, the person working in a business and the person coming into a business but it does just make me feel like, you know, there are, people are carrying so much extra stuff right now from everything that they might have gone mm. through that it, it seems understandable that there would be some, you know, rough edges as, as people brush up against each other virtually, of course. Um in you know in this in this funny year but it, it I think 
really kindness is going to get you through. And I think in every interaction, I try to give something to the other person, like to leave leave them better than they were mm. when I got there. And that that's just a really, that could just be a simple thank you or it can be just a little bit of chit chat or it might just be a smile. It's, mm. um, but I think you do need to be quite self-aware and in control of your own feelings and your own situation to, to bring that bit of extra positive energy to any interaction. And perhaps people are just at a low ebb in many cases at the moment. Um, but it, it's, yeah, mm. from a, in a customer service situation, it's, it's, an, it's, is an, it is an extra load on staff to, to sort of, uh, to massage those situations and to carry people through. It must be, I can imagine there's a lot of really, really tired people at the end of a working day at the moment. Absolutely. And it does go the other way as well, Danny. You know, I had a situation at a client the other day where a staff member, you know, was going through a lot of um, mental challenges through through the personal life and still wanted to come to work because, you know, talked about it being a good distraction. So, you know, we made sure obviously the check-in, but this one particular day obviously showed up to work and, you know, was, was quite, I use the word snappy, you know, was quite yeah. snappy at a customer customer immediately started crying got up and walked away oh my goodness. and <laughs> for that customer we've actually followed up with the customer from um contact tracing and and the details to make sure are you okay and the particular customer actually had just gone through a best friend passing away mm. and you know was going out to try and relax and when the waitress was, you know, a little bit snappy, that triggered him and his emotions. So I think, you know, it, it goes both ways and it is just about checking, like you said, self-awareness, checking and taking a minute to breathe and go, okay, where's my head at today? You know, where is my mind? Am I okay today? Am I here? And am I present? And I'm showing up. I've got heaps going on, but I'm showing up and I'm going to be kind and I'm, I'm you know, going to portray I'm in a good mood and I'm positive, um, you know, and I'm going to check my tone all the time and I'm going to have other colleagues or whoever it might be hold me accountable if they think that I'm getting, you know, a little bit snappy. They're going to, they're going to hold me accountable and they're going to have that conversation with me as well. Um, so I think for everybody involved, whether it's customers or staff, we've all gone through so much. We just need to kind of sit back, take that five minutes or few minutes before our work shift to reflect, how am I showing up today and show up the best version of yourself? How was that staff member in that situation, you know, that um, they'd made the customer upset? I mean, they must have felt dreadful. Awful. Absolutely awful because, you know, she she had so much going on f because of isolation. She didn't actually realise, and we talk about self-awareness, she didn't realise that her tone was being a bit snappy. You know, she she wasn't thinking about that. She was just, you know, doing doing what she does every day. And she, she hadn't realised that. It wasn't until, you know, one of our other um, other staff members had pulled her up and said, are you okay? Do you, do you need to go home? And, you know, she replied, no, no, I'm fine. Why? Well, I'm not sure if you noticed, but we did listen and I think that approach and your tone with the customer probably could have been better. Um, and it wasn't until that conversation took place that she turned around, broke into tears um, and went, oh, my gosh, I do need to go home. I'm not okay. I, I, I don't know what I'm what I'm doing here. I, I've got to go home. So, you know, obviously we made sure she got home and was okay um, and I got called in and, you know, had a conversation with her, sent her home. She was fine with a friend or housemate. But it wasn't until that little conversation took place that actually made her realise, you know, you're not okay and you do need to get, you know, have some support around you and that support is is not best for you to be in this environment for you. You know, it's it's for, mm. for, for you, I know you're thinking it's a distraction, but unfortunately it's it's masking what you need to talk about or what you need to work on. And, you know, for as much as, you know, one person down, we couldn't get a replacement, you know, from a business, that puts strain on the business. But again, 
it's about looking at the human and, and focusing on her and what she needed then was to go home to regroup and, and you know, to get that support. Um, and she actually only came back today. So she took took about a week and a bit off um, to, wow. to just get some support. Obviously, she she had sick leave. She's a permanent staff member um, and we were happy to pay that sick leave. So not every business owner obviously is going to do that. Um, it does depend on culture because obviously that's a cost to the business to pay a week of sick leave. But we identified that, you know, will of good faith, we're going to pay you that sick leave. We don't need to because it's technically annual leave, but we're going to do that because you do need to go and support yourself and, you know, speak to someone and work through a few things. Mm. So one of the things that businesses have to deal with these days is online reviews and, you know, the power that customers have in in that arena. Can you talk about how you deal with that and is that something that, mm. that um, your mum's cafe has uh, had had a lot to deal with? Yeah, look, <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I haven't heard your podcast with mum yet, so I'm not sure what she said if you've asked her that question. But we didn't know. We didn't talk didn't. about online. <laughs> we, we've had quite a few recently um, at, at Bob's. Um, we have had quite a few because of some of the COVID safe procedures we've put in place, um, you know, to protect our customers. We've had a lot of backlash. So, for example. Oh, yeah, she did actually. Did she? Did she yeah. did talk about the water bottles now that you <laughs> yeah. now that you say that yeah so yeah, yeah, you know forgot. we've we've yeah. put like a lot of restaurants and a lot of cafes we've also put a dollar headcount on on people um and I get it's frustrating sometimes you do just want to go in and sit on your coffee but unfortunately at peak times with restrictions and capacity of how many people were allowed in we've had to put a, a you must have a meal at peak times in place now that's frustrated a lot of people and they have gone keyboard warrior um you know walked in and was rudely told I had to have a meal and this is absurd and this is ridiculous and you know kind of keyboard worrying on Google or wherever it might be. With that, we do go back and just say, you know, so sorry that you you felt this way, but due to, to COVID, this is our current procedure. You don't have to stay. You know, we're not forcing you to come in and stay and have a meal. You you can go elsewhere and that's fine. You can come back to another day, you know, an, another time when perhaps this isn't our policy when we can have as many people in the cafe as possible. But unfortunately at the moment this is our procedure. So, you know, we will always go back sometimes with an explanation. Um, if, if others, and we do a lot around kind of how to handle these complaints, even in other industries, there's a lot in trades industries as well um, and the best approach is you know obviously try to take it offline try to not get into a review war where you know they're editing their review multiple times because you're editing yours as the owner and you're commenting back and that's not true that's not true you know what what's going on here always try to take it offline apologize for the experience that I've had if it's completely incorrect I actually, Danny, you may not agree with this, but I do take the stance to say provide context, you know, provides a little bit of context. Sorry for that experience. You know, um, I, I don't agree though. I think this is what happened from our perspective. I would love to understand your perspective further. Let's, you know, come in for a coffee and let's talk about this further um, because as business owners, we are always wanting to grow. We're always wanting to be better. And that feedback, it's actually really valuable. You know, why was that their perspective of the encounter when our perspective is so different on what happened? You know, what's gone on here mm. to have two different perspectives? So I do take that stance. A lot of people don't agree with me. A lot of people say in hospitality, oh, just write back saying, so sorry for your experience, you know, all the best. Some people say ignore the bad reviews and don't comment back. Um, but I do take that stance of trying to understand what went wrong, using that um, reflective piece and that feedback to get better, to do better if, you know, something hasn't gone right or gone well um, and trying to, you know, again, just see and understand what, why their perspective of that encounter is different. Mm. So, Jess, is there anything else that you want to say, any final words of wisdom for, for um, employers, uh, employees or, and indeed customers? Look, I think 
like like we've said, the hospitality industry has been so significantly impacted, Danny. We we just have to show that we care for our people, that, you know, our employees that stood by us through this challenging time, that showed up to work to do takeaway, that, you know, perhaps we're waiting at home eagerly to get back into the business. We really do need to show them we are here for them, we care for them take that focus on employee wellness, um, you know, encourage their their job satisfaction and that they want to show up to work in a healthy, positive workplace, um, making sure you're taking all the steps to actually talk to them and understand, you know, how they feel. Um, and for customers, it's just about remembering we are people we are humans we are people on the other side we don't always get it right but be patient with us explain to us what's happened and we will do everything we can because ultimately in hospitality our joy comes from serving you as customers and our joy comes from doing the best that we can be and delivering you know the highest quality of service and food that we possibly can so I think as business owners just be there for your employees. Employees, talk to your business owners. If you're not feeling great, have courage to speak to business owners. We want to know how you're going and how you're feeling and customers to just be kind. Very good. Um, I just want to let uh, people know if this conversation's brought anything up for you and you need to talk to someone, uh, contact your GP um, or call Lifeline on 131114. There is going to be someone on the other end of the line if you do need to talk to somebody urgently. Um, Jess, thank you so much for bringing your perspective to this week of conversations about customer behaviour. It's been invaluable to um, have you being able to speak from Uh, all different sides of the fence but yeah thank you very much and um, when I come into Bob's Your Uncle I will be very happy to have my coffee at 70 degrees. (laughs) Thank you so much Danny I'll remember 70 degrees. (laughs) (laughs) However you bring it it's going to be fine but I'm not going to make a fuss. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me Danny good to speak. This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about. We spend a week thrashing around each issue, hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you. This is a Deep in the Weeds production.